In this video, the auditor is following audit trails related to production part approval process. And they are verifying that the organization has got a process aligned with any customer specific requirements. Watch this video and see whether the auditor is undertaking an effective audit. So I'm following up. Obviously, you know we're in the aluminium printing area earlier. Uh, and I saw that recently you've been introducing a number of variant uh, products. Really, the only difference is the color. Um, what I'm looking for then is what is your part approval process for those color variants? Yeah, so basically the only thing we need sign off from the customer on is the uh, color appearance itself. Okay, so what do, you, what do you physically submit to the customer? So uh, it's just uh, we have to show them it, they have their form that we fill out that uh, matches their, their... So is this appearance master? Right. Right, okay. And is that the only thing that you would submit to the customer as part approval then? Yeah, since it's just a color change, that's all they requested. Right, but in the customer specifics, I saw that they wanted PPAP level three. That's in the, the customer specific requirements. Why are you not doing the PPAP level three? Uh, when they were here on site, they, they mentioned they don't need a, a level three PPAP, and they, that they just needed this master. Right, and did you get that documented from the customer? I don't know, it was a verbal agreement. Right, okay, because at the moment I'm in the position that you're only submitting the appearance approval report, but the customer specific says uh, for every product submission it should be the full PPAP level three. Um, and I'm not seeing the supporting documentation. So I do have a concern. I do accept maybe the customer verbally said that's okay, but oh. that's not really so uh, evidence in an audit. Okay, if I go back, is it too late? Well, I think I, w I will be raising it as a nonconformity. Uh, you'll have to, to look from a corrective action point of view uh, which direction to go. Okay. Um, but it, at the moment, it is not acceptable that you've deviated from the customer specifics without any formal deviation. Okay, understood. Yeah. So I will be reporting that at the meeting later. Yep. Okay, so thanks for your, your input on that. So the key learning points. One of the key requirements in IETF 16949 is the organization has a production approval process either recognized by the customer or as defined by the organization's own requirements. In this particular case, we saw the organization were making a similar product, but with different color variants. And the auditor was correctly challenging the organization for the different color variants, what was the production part approval process that was being followed. The auditor ascertained through the customer specific requirements that the customer required PPAP level three for any new part submissions. And in this case, the organization said, because the only variation was color, that they had not followed those customer specific requirements. In this case, if the organization had gone to the customer and they had got a waiver only to supply maybe the appearance approval report with the warrant, then maybe that would be acceptable. But in this case, although they had had correspondence with the customer, they hadn't got any form of documented waiver to show what they were doing was acceptable. So the auditor was right to say that this could give the potential for a nonconformity in the IETF 16949 audit. So let's summarize. In IETF 16949, it does not define the part approval procedure that an organization has to use. That is either defined by the customer or by the organization's own requirements. In this particular video, it was very apparent that the customer did have requirements 
that were not being followed by the organization. Although they seem to have got verbal approval from the customer not to provide a full PPAP submission, they hadn't got any documented information from the customer that allowed for that deviation. So in an IETF audit, this could give the basis for a non-conformity.